Welcome, in this video we're going to be talking about cells, mainly eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Animal and plant cells are both examples of eukaryotic cells, and bacterial cells are examples of prokaryotic cells. Now straight away, one difference is that animal and plant cells have a nucleus, which is that black sphere looking object. Bacterial cells do not have this. So that's the main difference between the word eukaryotic, which means with a nucleus, and prokaryotic, without a nucleus. The next difference is that bacterial cells are much smaller than animal and plant cells. Also, they are only found in single-celled organisms, whereas animal and plant cells are found in multicellular organisms. Okay, let's look at the animal cell in a bit more detail. We have the cell surface membrane, which holds the cell together and controls what goes in and out of the cell. A special property is that it is semi-permeable, meaning it allows some molecules to pass in and out freely, however larger molecules cannot pass as easily. We have these structures called ribosomes, and they take small molecules called amino acids and join them together to make larger molecules called proteins. This is a mitochondria. An important reaction called aerobic respiration takes place, and this creates energy for the cell. Energy is also referred to as ATP. The majority of the cell is a gel-like substance called the cytoplasm. This allows important chemical reactions to take place. Finally, we have the nucleus. In the nucleus, we have a molecule called DNA, which is coiled up into structures called chromosomes. This controls the cell's activities. All of these five things that we mentioned are called subcellular structures or organelles. Okay, so let's look at the plant cell now. The plant cell has all five subcellular structures that the animal cell had, but it has three more. It has a chloroplast, which is made of an important pigment called chlorophyll, and this allows photosynthesis to occur. Through this way, the plant can make food for itself in the form of glucose. A permanent vacuole is where all of the cell sap, or solution of sugars and ions, is found. Animal cells also have vacuoles, but they're not permanent. So the key word here is that a plant cell has a permanent vacuole. And finally, a cell wall, which is made of a tough material called cellulose. This supports the plant and gives it its shape. Remember, the cell wall is always on the outside of the cell membrane. Okay, let's look at the bacterial cell now. So, a bacteria does not have a nucleus, which is why it's referred to as a prokaryotic cell. Nor does it have any mitochondria or chloroplasts. So, its genetic material is floating freely in the cytoplasm. Remember, this controls the activities of the cell. This little circle is called a plasmid. Plasmids give bacteria special characteristics such as antibiotic resistance. Also, plasmids can be shared between bacteria, meaning that if one bacteria has a special characteristic, it can share that with its friend. A bacterial cell also has a cell wall for support. However, unlike a plant cell, it's not made of cellulose. Some bacteria have a tail-like structure called a flagellum. This helps the bacteria to swim around. And finally, these pin-like structures are called pili. And what they do is allow the bacteria to attach and climb through organisms. I hope that you understand the difference between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.